G'day nerds. So today we're going to talk about ionic bonds. Now, in this picture here you see what we tend to call I think it's like Himalayan pink rock salt or pink salt or whatever. And we've always talked about sodium chloride as salt, yeah? The reason this salt is pink is because it's got iron and magnesium sort of mixed into that, that ionic crystal. And that's why. Now, by the end of this, what I would like you to do is be able to explain the formation of ionic bonds and what properties will extend from that. So this is our vocabulary. If I just get you to write this down, pause the video, write it down, and you'll have this to refer back to as we move through the lesson. So an ionic bond. Uh, ionic bonds occur between cations and anions. And they form, remember, when you get a neutral atom will donate an electron to another neutral atom to both form stable octets. And that gives you your cation, which donates the atom, that donates the electron, and your anion, which accepts the electron. So usually it's due to, well, we can say that non-metals and metals form uh, ionic bonds, but it's actually more accurate to talk about the difference in the electronegativity on the polling scale. If there is on the polling scale a difference in electronegativity of greater than two, what you'll find is that we have an ionic bond occurring. When we have this large electronegative difference, what that means is we have an element which is about to become an anion is able to attract or pull electrons away from an, an element which is much less electronegative. So again, it's that greater than two on the polling scale. Now, once this happens, we've got these, these two species, these two ions, which have opposing electronegative, uh, electrostatic charges. And this means that these really, really strong electrostatic forces will pull them together and form crystal lattices or crystal structures. So let's talk about the properties. Basically, these are also called salts. Salt isn't just sodium chloride. Salts are what we call ionic compounds. Uh, opposite charges attract, as we know, and pull the ions together. Where it's probably a bit different than what we've thought about is that they pull them together in a radial fashion. So if we look down here, right, this one here is sodium chloride. The little one in the middle there is sodium. The big one is, is chloride because sodium is so much smaller than chlorine. Um, and we can see that the sodium, which has a one-to-one -one charge with chlorine, has pulled chlorine atoms all around. So it's surrounded by chlorine atoms. It's not surrounded by chlorine and sodium atoms. It's a, it's a radial pull. And this gives you this nice repeating block crystal structure. But we can also see that there are other structures as well. For example, here's copper one chloride. And this is not a repeating square. It's a different shape. And we get actually quite a large range of shapes in our ionic, ionic lattices. So what this means is that there's no discrete molecules, right? We'll write sodium chloride as NaCl. And when we write it as NaCl, what we're really writing is that there's an connected to, that's then connected to another one. No, that's not right. And so forth all the way along. It's a repeating pattern, but the smallest possible ratio is one sodium to one chlorine, and that's the formula we write down. But there are no discrete molecules. Um, there are no free ele electrons or ions moving around, so when it's a solid, they actually don't conduct electricity. Um, as liquids, they are essentially free-flowing ions, and it takes a lot of energy to break those bonds, but once they're a liquid, uh, we can conduct electricity. In solution, the free ions moving around because they're dissolved, and they're able to carry a charge and conduct electricity. Now, how do we put these together? Let's look at magnesium and chlorine. Now, we're going to look at valency here. So, when we react magnesium and chlorine together, what we have is a magnesium ion and a chloride ion, because they've gotten close to each other. The uh, chlorine has stripped away electrons from the magnesium. And we do the swap and drop method, which means we take the valency of one and drop it down low, and the valency of the other and drop it down low as well. Now, we need to number... It's just, it's just a minus, so it, the, what it means is it's minus one. So we need to number that and drop it down. Cool. And now we have our ratio, which is magnesium, one magnesium to two chlorines. But, slight problem there, we don't write the one. So it becomes magnesium chloride is one magnesium, two chlorides. And that's in a crystalline solid. 
and this is our our structure here. But of course, we need to balance it because that's who we are. Actually, that one's already balanced. Nice. So, when we represent ionic bonds, we want to talk about element Lewis dot structures. This is a really good way of doing it. So we write down the elemental symbol for a Lewis dot structure. We draw the valence electrons. Okay, so we pop these around. So magnesium has two, chlorine has seven, and we, you'll note that we've used different symbols on them to indicate where they come from because at, that's them as elements. We're about to show them as the ions. So the magnesium, we draw square brackets around to show that it's an ion. We indicate the charge with an indice at the top. Now the magnesium doesn't have any valence electrons around it now. They're gone. And we've got these chlorines here, which has one bonus, one electron from the magnesium ion up here, so it's sort of come there. But you'll notice that, that doesn't neutralize the magnesium. So we have to have two chlorines there. So we've got two chlorines and this, and we see the charges up there. And that's a Lewis dot structure. Uh, I've got another video on Lewis dot structures and you should check that out if you're not quite familiar with that. I hope that made a lot of sense. If it didn't, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We'll get back to you as quick as we can. Hit subscribe so you can keep up with what we're putting out there. And yeah, thanks for watching. Um,